Hey everyone, I hope you are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, I'm going to show you another way of how we can bypass web application firewall. We are going to dive deep into how the developers actually set the firewall in such a way that it will block some malicious request or some uh, unwanted uh, requests or responses, right? So as always, before going to this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see at the right side of the screen. And now with that being said, let us get started. So over here, you can see that I have my website, which is bepractical.tech, right? And if you see over here that if I try to access this website, I can access it without any issue, right? Now, let us say that from a developer's perspective, I want to uh, restrict the access of this particular website. Why? Because let us say that this website is holding some sensitive information that I only want the internal developers of my team to see. So how can I do that? For that, we can use the web application firewall, right? And this is one of the most common practices that you'll see when developers try to restrict some sensitive contents from the public user, right? So that the normal user won't have the access. Let's say there are some backup files that the developer has hidden on a particular subdomain, right? Now, if uh, a normal user is trying to get the subdomain, try to access the subdomain, it will restrict them. It will say 403 forbidden or something like that. Whereas for the developers, it will allow them to access the website. Right. So how can we do this? So how can we restrict the uh, access to the uh, public user? The simple way is using the web application firewall and I'm going to show you how. For example, let us say that there is the web application fire of, firewall of my uh, Cloudflare or bepractical.tech. Right. So what I can do over here is I can create a rule. So I'm going to create a rule over here and then I can just add a rule. Let's say Batman. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the field, the specific field, which is, let us say that I want to select this specific header. Let's say that I want to accept only if uh, the request is coming from local host, which means 127.0.0.1. For that, what I can use is I can use X forwarded for header, right? So I'm going to add this header and what I'm going to do is let's say that if the X forwarded for header is not equals to 127.0.0.1, which means that if the X forwarded for header does not set to 127.0.0.1, what I want to do is I want the web application firewall to block the request, right? So I can go over here and I can choose an action and I can simply block it, right? And if I deploy this rule, you'll see what happens. You can see the rule has been deployed. Let's try to open the bpractical.tech website in a new tab. So I'm going to type b bpractical.tech. And this time you'll see that the access to this website is blocked, which means that no public user can actually access this website, right? You see, this is the idea of the developers. And most of the time you'll see that this is the actual scenario of how developers try to add custom rules to restrict some of the uh, sensitive uh, pages or sensitive actions of a particular web application, right? Now let us try to see that how we can actually bypass this. Now that we have deployed the rule, let us try to see that how we can bypass it. So as you may have guessed, we can use various tool right over here. So let us try to use burp suit and let us try to see how we can bypass it. Right. So I'm going to open my burp suit from here. Let me just open it real quick and let me just set up my Firefox as well. Yeah. Let's wait for a few seconds now. Let me just turn off my intercept and I think we're good to go. Yeah. So what we can do now is we can just open the website like bepractical.tech. You can see that it is saying that you have been blocked, right? So what I can do again is I can just uh, intercept the request from here. Okay. And I can send this to repeater, right? Then uh, we can actually see that it is a header based restriction, right? So if the user has somehow provided the right a header will be able to bypass it for that what i can use is i can use uh, a extension which is param minor right so we can go to the extension over here and then we can actually go to the b app store and we can select the extension which is param minor let me just show you uh, here it is 
just click on install and this will install paraminer into your machine right so basically it can be used to identify hidden parameters hidden headers and all those things right so let us try to install it just wait for a few seconds and as you can see it has been installed we're going to repeat it again and uh, if you see right over here we've got a uh, additional feature which of extension right i can select param minor from here i can go to guest params and then i can select over here which is guest headers which means that i want to brute force the headers right so let's try to guess guess headers and let's see what will happen after that just click on ok and it will start the header brute forcing so first we are initially gathering gathering some information about this particular target you can see that it is blocking our request so what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if there are some hidden headers and all those things or not right just like what we do what we'll do in a normal or a real world scenario right let's try to do hidden extension over here and we should see the output right over here you can see that it has not found any header whatsoever right why it has not found any header it could be something related to the technical issue of this particular extension or it might be uh, limited to some kind of functionalities right what again we can do is we can install some other tools for example let me just go to my Kali Linux from here okay and then just hit enter you can see Kali Linux is up and running. So what we can do is we can install a tool which is known as 403 bypass, right? So if you go to the Google, just go to Google real quick. If I type 403 bypass GitHub and don't worry, the link of this tool is also given in the description, right? So I'm just going to select this one. You can see this is the tool right over here. Let us let us clone this real quick. Let's type git clone, paste it right over here. Let's go to the tool. Let's use this tool. So we are going to for sorry bypass 403. Let's see what are the available options to us. You see we have a lot of options, and the basic option is let's see if there's some basic options. So, yeah, so we can simply specify the URL and the path. So what I can do is I can specify the URL, which is be practical tech and the path. Let's say the path is this hit enter. Let's see if it is able to bypass it. Okay. Again, you can see that it has not been able to bypass. The reason is, see, uh, if you see over here, the X forwarded for header, it is actually appending HTTP before the actual uh, IP address, right? And since we have deployed the rule, we know that what exactly needed to bypass it. We needed a header of which the value should be 127.0.0.1, nothing else, right? So let's try to use some other tool and let us try to see if we can bypass it. I'm going to use this one 403 bypass. Let's copy this one. And let us try to clone this as well. Just go back, let's type get clone 403. Let's go to the directory 403. Let's try to type bash 403 sh minus help and you can see this is the available option. We can specify minus u for the URL. Let's specify the URL https bpractical.tech and finally let us hit enter and let us see what will happen after that. Okay, so no module is given. Okay, so let's just try header bypass, right? So we can specify minus minus header. Let us try to see what will happen. Let's wait for a few seconds. Now right over here you see there is something very interesting. Okay. So this tool was actually able to bypass the 403 by specifying the actual value for the x forwarded for header. When we have set the rule, we know that the rule is that if the x forwarded for header equals to 127.0.0.1 which means the local host then it will allow the access 
of the particular web application right and you see it has clearly specified this particular value over here x forward four one twenty seven point zero point zero point one so from here we have identified three important things right the first thing is that you should always try to use various tools the second thing is that if you are not able to see any uh, hidden header then it doesn't mean that the header is not actually present right it could be possible that the header is present you need to tweak your uh, uh, you can say fuzz your uh, data for each headers in such a way that you'll be able to find the hidden header right so try to use this tool i'm giving the link of this tool in the description right so uh, by using this tool you'll be able to see like how you can bypass 403s right so i hope that you are able to understand that how we can bypass 403 forbidden now let us try to see that what will be the actual way the best way to secure your application from uh, this kind of bypass so the best way that you can use is uh, you can modify the rule over here uh, let me just edit it and then in the field what you can do is you can select the ip source address right so it will automatically check if the ip origin is 127.0.0.1 or not right so this is the best way because it does not rely on any kind of header so it won't be able to uh, any user will not be able to bypass this particular uh, rule right unless your origin ip is leaking somewhere right so again i hope that you have understood it if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security as well as web development and if you like the way i teach then you should check out my course which is the art of web reconnaissance and two more course which is the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers and hacking windows with python from scratch you'll learn a lot of interesting things because you know to get to this point where you can bypass 403 and all those things you need to do a lot of reconnaissance information gathering and all those things which is actually covered in my the in my the art of reconnaissance course so you can check it out the link of all of these courses are in the description so yeah if you're interested then go ahead and check it out and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching